just got this caliper bracket off and look at that inside pad I think it's down to the metal as well but it looks like it's been like that for a little bit longer because it's just dirty it's not like shiny metal and look at the ins or the outside pad and it's missing a good chunk right there at the edge just like the other side so owner's been driving like this for obviously quite some time and just didn't care realistically um, you know if the noise wasn't that bad just put the radio up keep driving <laughs> alright so I'm moving this car back and forth just uh, in my driveway and of course I'm gonna take it for a test drive but I can tell you right now the brakes feel way better it's crazy it's like a whole different car <laughs> Alright, so uh, for a test drive, the brakes feel good, no noise. Um, notice the check engine lights on, and on the dash, we got the oil pressure low stop engine warning, and there goes the oil low oil light is on, and of course, the transmission is shifting very hard, but it's here for brakes. So, I'm done with uh, what I had to do. Alright, so it's uh, maybe like two weeks later, and this is that same accord that I put the battery and the starter in. And now it's back to get this cable that I mentioned before to get it replaced, the cable for the negative side. Um, found it on Rock Auto and you can see it's a pretty good match because it, it actually has uh, the separate line coming off that goes directly to the chassis. And this one is going to go to the transmission. So you can see the condition of the old one and yeah, it's, I mean this happens to all of these. Okay, so it's pretty much all done. As you can see, you got the ground going to where it belongs. Got that one going down there and it's all buttoned up right here on the battery so uh, yeah uh, so far the owner reported to me that she has not been experiencing any more starting issues ever since we replaced the battery and put the new new starter on it we could see uh, the muffler has a bolt that's looks like just broken off all right, so here's the stabilizer links and the bar. I can see that the bushings are worn out. Just by hitting the bar, you could hear all the noise. That's uh, one place to start. Uh, it's going to need new sway bar bushings and stabilizer bar links. I'll go ahead and close out this video right here. I'll let the owner know what uh, what parts it needs for the clunking coming from the back. A lot of squeaking whenever you turn the steering wheel. Maybe ball joint, dried up ball joints or something. Got this 2000 Accord. It's here for some uh, tie rods. See, the inner tie rod has this play. And I think there's also a heat shield that's rattling underneath. Alright, so I got the new inner tie rod installed. You gotta make sure you put the lock washer on. You can see it right there. It's pretty much this thing right here. And once you tighten down the inner tie rod, you wanna crush over these edges, and it's what locks the tie rod in place. Um, you know, besides that, I put a little dab of uh, blue Loctite or thread locker on here, uh, you know, just for a little bit of extra security. And another thing I like to do is see right here the joint. I mean, it looks pretty dry, even though it's brand new. It's got grease on the inside, but on my cousin's Accord, he actually developed a pretty bad squealing sound every time he turned or squeak every time he turned the steering wheel. And it turned out. It was the inner tie rod. So ever since I came across that problem on his car, whenever I do inner tie rod, they just kind of pack this joint right here with a little bit of grease. And it's what actually solved the problem on his car. Did get that squealing noise to go away. So right now it's super easy to pack some grease in here before you put the boot on. All right, so underneath the car, uh, the heat shield on the converter is what's making the rattling noise. You can see someone's already been in here. They put like that wire around it to try to hold it down on that side. But now this side was rattling. So as you can see, I went ahead and put a clamp on it. And it's nice and solid now. No more rattle. So it should do for now. Alright, so as you can see, I removed the whole sway bar because it's not too bad of a job to remove the whole thing. And uh, it just makes putting on the new stabilizer, especially taking off the old stabilizer links, uh, a little bit easier with the part off of the car so I'm gonna get these old ones off and then I'll pop the new ones on and uh, put the whole thing back on the car the way it came off with the links already attached to it all right so I'm pretty much done with all of this you can see a new stabilizer link new bushings 
test driving this Accord and the rattling from the heat shield is gone. The clunky noise up front from the bad tie rod is gone. And all that noise we had in the rear end from the stabilizer links and bushings, all of that is gone. It actually sounds pretty quiet inside of here. Got this 2000 Accord here. It's here for a upper and lower ball joint. I just took the boot off of the lower ball joint and you can see all the crap that's inside of here. Got the bottom one all knocked out. Pretty straightforward job. And now to do the upper ball joint. So I'm done here. Got the lower ball joint installed. Cotter pin in. Upper ball joint. Cotter pin in. Everything is uh, put back together. Let's see if it got rid of that uh, annoying noise that we had. So far so good, I don't hear the noise. I, I should have should have gotten a clip of it before I actually started doing the work so you guys could hear it. It sounded something like this. Now that I got the toolbox in its place, looking at this table full of crap, and this one right here, it's like, you know, this stuff has to get cleaned up. I've got to take care of this. These have to be clean work surfaces, and I wanna try to keep them clutter free because this is obviously uh, useless. You can't do anything on these workbenches. So, yeah, I'm gonna try to clean them up. Worst part about getting a new toolbox is the reorganizing and then spending like the next three weeks trying to remember where you put all your tools at. So, that sucks. <laughs> it's the next morning and here I got this uh, Volkswagen TIG one here, the one I was talking about last night. And it looks like now we got the correct parts from AutoZone. So, as you can see, I've already started. This was the bad side. So, here was the pad that was on this side. Man, this Volkswagen is in a uh, rough condition. The worst thing of them all. Look at this. So, broken mirror. Look at this. That's pretty nasty. That is not an easy repair. I'm done doing the brakes on this Volkswagen, but uh, because she was in an accident, she said something about they told her she has a vacuum leak or something. So here goes the codes on this car. Okay, look at this. It's like the never ending story. <laughs> That's crazy. When I had the hood open, uh, I could definitely hear uh, some sort of vacuum leak. Uh, but I'm just gonna have to bring it back some other time to if she wants me to look at that. It's only here for brakes today. Another thing I noticed is Okay, so it's in park. It's idling. If I rev up the engine a little bit Look at that oil pressure engine off Yeah, I'm not gonna drive it for too long I'm just gonna take it out for a test drive make sure the brakes are good and give it back to her because I don't know what's causing that but I don't want to be the one driving it when something decides to go bad. Alright, so I am back with this Impala and I almost forgot to make a video on it. It's like a week or two later and we got the parts in. So I put the wheel bearing on right here. We got the outer tie rod. I just finished tightening down. Go ahead and straighten that out because it bothers me. And it's not a 21, it's a 22. Alright, that looks better. Alright, so like I said, tie rod is on, wheel bearing is on. I fixed this brake hose that was kind of curled up in the wrong way. Uh, the next thing is I just finished pulling off the stabilizer link and I didn't catch this initially, but the top half of the sway bar is actually broken off. You, should, you see it should be like that and it's actually broken right there. And I looked on the other side, the right side of the car, and it's the same exact problem. This same piece is snapped off in the same way. I'm going to run without it. For all we know, it could just be causing clunking noise. But, uh, you know, technically, the sway bar needs to be replaced since both of these ends are broken off. But we're just going to roll with it since uh, the bottom half is still intact. Eventually, that will break off one day. Um, another thing I noticed while I'm in here is... These lower control arms need to be replaced. 
Look at these bushings and they're all kind of like that. I don't know how I missed this the first time I was in here inspecting this car. I I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't have an excuse for you. I just missed it somehow. Uh, but yes, it is going to need lower control arms and that's going to be for a different day, obviously. So now I'm on the right side of the car. I just disconnected the outer tie rod. And you can see on this side what I was talking about, how this piece is also broken on the top. And here is the CV shaft that we're going to be changing. You can see the clamp isn't doing anything. I'm sure by now all of the grease has been thrown out. Alright, so I just got the knuckle separated from the strut. And that thing just pulled out like nothing. Like, just fell right out this side's being a little stubborn i'm gonna go ahead and get the air hammer all right so i am pretty much done on this side and yeah i got a mess i pulled out the axle and i completely forgot to put a pan underneath there so that sucks i'll just clean up the mess i'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of trans fluid to it and uh everything else is ready to go just gotta put the axle nut on and torque that down to spec all right so i am done everything's torqued down I went ahead and added some trans fluid. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm ready to get out this garage. It's like 10 p.m. It's about, I don't know, about 80 degrees in here. And it's, it's actually hotter inside the garage than it is outside because there's no airflow. There's no windows here, no <laughs> nothing. And this fan up here, all it does is blow around uh, hot air, you know? What I've been wanting to try, I'm sure we've all seen this on YouTube videos. Uh, where people put like the copper coil in front of a fan and then the other end goes into like a, a cooler right filled with ice cold water and then maybe use like a small pump to uh, to cycle the water throughout the copper line and the air blowing on it is supposed to I mean it's not going to be like an AC but it's supposed to blow out cool air so if anyone has any opinions on that let me know you think it'll work because I'm seriously thinking of trying it <laughs> sucks that I had to take so much apart but basically uh, I disconnected the plug for the little uh, motor actuator that locks and unlocks the doors which is also the door latch as you can see I took the bolts out so I could move it enough to get to the harness um, and basically I'm just using my power probe here and just like you see if I touch like that we got a ground and then I just go over and hit the lock and unlock switch and one wire has switches over to power when I lock it and another wire switches over to power when I unlock it so that tells me we have everything uh, that we need in order for this thing to work we simply just have a bad uh, door latch which is also the motor for the lock and unlock so that's it I mean it sucks like I said it sucks that I have to take everything apart and get this far but I didn't want to just uh, tell the, the owner to order these parts and then you know we slap them on and it turns out it's not the problem so all right so i'm just about done got everything uh buttoned up here and yeah i'm gonna make the call just say you need some uh lock actuators which is the door latch and that's it you know i just got a text from someone um saying hey what's a good time to bring my car over for an oil change so i told them uh, maybe like 2 p.m okay and they're like oh no i can't do it today so i told them well your text sounded like you want because you said what's a good time if you wanted it on a different day your text should say something more along the lines of hey what's a good day am i wrong am i crazy you know what i mean it just it just really bothers me when people are like hey what's a good time i'm like hey be here in two hours oh no i can't do it today so why did you say what's a good time this shit makes no sense to me Alright, so I've already swapped out the blender actuator. This is the old one right here. So, that's working. Let's move on to the next thing, which is the door latch or door switch actuator thingamajiggle. And I got the new one installed. Still have a few more things to connect, but... Sweet. Alright, so I'm all done with the lock actuators. Now all of them open. Or should I say lock and unlock. Alright, so moving along here on this Impala. 
you can see now I'm doing the lower control arms up front. Uh, there's the first side, so I'm working on the passenger side. And next, I'll knock out the driver's side. See how bad this bushing is. Alright, so I thought, this is interesting. This is a Moog lower control arm. And this is the first time I've actually seen a boot on a ball joint that's actually like clear, like transparent. It's hard to tell because of the light reflection, but you can see through that boot. I thought it was interesting. First time I've ever seen this. And that's pretty much it. Got both of the control arms on the car. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the wheels on it and drive it up on some ramps so that I could torque uh, these suspension bolts down while the suspension is loaded. And that'll be it for this car. We're back with this Impala. It's the one that was just here yesterday because I did the, uh, you know, like the door actuators and the control arms. So it's literally the next day. And the owner comes out to her car and it's a no crank. Looks bad for me because I just worked on the car. And she never had this problem before. Hmm, right? So uh, here's the battery. As you can see, it looks real crusty. Uh, when I initially went to go check the battery... It was just over 10 volts and of course the car is not going to start. Uh, so we gave it a jump and we let the car run for about 45-50 minutes. And uh, it got a nice little charge on it. As you can see, it's reading 12.8 volts right now. But let's go ahead. I can't do a cranking test right now because she took the key with her for some reason. But let's go ahead and do a just a cold cranking amp test on the battery. And I already got it set, this 700. You can see down there, it says CCA 700. All right, so let's go ahead and do this test. Get it, 510. And automatically the little red light turns on for bad battery. And I've done this test two times already, and the first time it was actually like 460. So it's, it's in that range. But it's a bad battery. Uh, so the fact that I just worked on it yesterday, it's just a coincidence that the battery is bad, but it always looks bad, right? You know, the customer always says, well, the car always started fine before you worked on it. So it was just a coincidence. We are back with this Pontiac Aztec. It's an Aztec that never stops giving. And it's just here for front brakes. Uh, pads are starting to grind. You can see how low they are. There's actually rough jacking underneath the pad. You can see it's starting to lift up the friction material just a little bit. Uh, yep so we got new rotors and pads for it so let's go ahead and get this knocked out we have a 2016 Chevy Cruze uh, it needs brakes uh, the owner tried to do the rear pads and rotors himself but he couldn't get the little torque screw off of it this one so he ended up pad slapping the back side and the damaged rotor did not take long to eat through the new pads so now it needs new pads again and this time he just brought it to me. He said change the rear rotors and pads. So while I was bringing it into the garage, I noticed that the front is also grinding. And you can see why. Look how low. There's no more friction material left on that inner pad. Um, so he just went to the store and he got front pads and rotors. And he said, you know what, let's just do all of it all the way around, which is a smart thing to do. So I got the front brakes all done. Now it's time to do the rear brakes. And I think I see why he decided to throw in the towel. So the screw is slightly removed, but you can see it's been stripped out. So I'm gonna do what I have to to get that screw out and it's not gonna go back in. Right, so I used the grinder here to put a slice in the screw and basically turn it into a flat head uh, screw. So now I'm just going to use the bit on the impact gun and it did start to move a little bit. Let's see if it continues to come out. Oh, I need a bigger flathead bit. Or just go get a bigger screwdriver. Yep. Let me go get something else. Alright, so I couldn't find a bigger bit that fits my... Uh, my small impact here but I did get the screw to start moving when I just drive it in and then drive it back out again but it just keeps stopping I don't know what's wrong with it it's been cross-threaded or what's going on 
but I'm just gonna spray it with some penetrating fluid and just keep working it back and forth. It should come out. All right, so the screw head is pretty much destroyed at this point, um, but it's sticking out enough to get my vice grips on it. It's still difficult. I think what's going on here is somebody ran the screw into the wrong hole. I don't think it's going into the hole that has the threads on it on the hub, but we'll find out once we get it out. All right, so I got it out, as you can see. Oh, that thing in there does look like it has like good threads in it. Yeah, I really don't know what happened here. But let's get the rotor off and get a closer look. Either way, I don't have a replacement screw to go in here, so I'm not. I'm just not going to put one back. No, there's only one hole on here, and yeah, I don't know what happened. The threads on here look to be fine. I'm not going to go ahead and test it because I don't have a screw to replace inside of there. Um, don't worry, all this stuff is grease. I was just cleaning up all the rust off of there. So, yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, it wasn't the owner because... Uh, he hasn't had this car too long and this was the first time he was trying to remove the rotors I believe they are the original rotors from 2016 when the car was made So whoever had this car before him they screwed that up Now I'm on the rear right side You can see pretty much have the same exact problem on this side that screw is stripped out So Again same thing cut a slice and screw with the grinder this side did not go as easy as the other side I actually had to pull out the air hammer with the chisel bit on it and just knock the head off of the screw as you can see so now I go ahead take off the caliper and knock this uh, rotor off and then I'll try to get my uh, vice grips on what's less left of the uh, the screw and see if I could unthread it out of the hub and here we go the screw is coming out I just put a little bit of heat to the hub Clamped on it with some vice grips and just kind of worked it back and forth. A little bit of penetrating fluid, and there it goes. I'm sure you could leave it in place right there if you wanted to, but it's kind of simple to get out usually if uh, you have enough space to clamp on it. Um, so, yeah, it's best to just remove it. And now we could go ahead and actually get the brakes done. Doesn't it suck when removing one screw takes longer than the actual job that you're doing? And that's it, job complete. Let's go ahead and wipe my fingerprints off of there. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop the wheels on, take it out for a test drive. Uh, it should stop pretty good. Got the brakes done all the way around. Here's the speaker that the owner installed. It's only got two screws holding it in, so the bottom was like flopping around. But this is how long the screw is. And yeah, I could see that coming in contact with the glass because this panel is very close to the glass. So I'm going to remove both screws and we'll roll the window all the way down and see if uh, the noise is gone and if it clears it. Alright, so moment of truth. Got the panel connected. Let's put the window down. Boom. All the way down without hitting anything. Yeah, so it's those two screws that he put in the speaker. I'll look for some shorter screws if I can. If I can't find any, I'll just cut those because there's no reason for them to be that long. Boom. Who's your daddy and what does he do? I just thought of something. What if it's not the screws that's hitting? What if it's the actual speaker? Because it's an aftermarket speaker and look how deep this thing is, right? So let me take off these screws that keep sticking to the magnet. Now if you look at the glass right here, so the glass is right here and the plastic, the mounting plastic is right here. This is probably maybe an inch and a half. Now this looks a lot deeper than that. So let's try to fit the speaker in here and see what happens. Okay, yeah, I can see the speaker's already hitting, the, or the magnet back there's already hitting the glass. And look how far, how far we are from its mounting location. That's a good, I don't know, maybe an inch. That's crazy. So, it's not the screws. What doesn't fit is the speakers. These speakers don't belong in this car. Sucks for him. So, I'm going to go ahead, call him, see what he wants to do. So he does not have the original speakers, and he said just put these back on. He's just going to deal with the glass not going all the way down, how he's been dealing with it. So, it ain't my car. Alright, so, how many of you guys have actually used one of these? It's basically a air jack. Okay, so you can see this one has three bags on it. You connect your air line, you slide it underneath the car, wherever you want to lift up. Open up the valve right here, and it lifts up the car. Open up the other valve, and it lets down the car. 
Now, I used to use these when I worked at the body shop, but it was a different name brand. It was actually a very expensive name brand. Like, for instance, this one right here on eBay or Amazon goes for about $100, maybe a little bit more. And the other name brand, when I looked into them, they're like, like a similar unit like this is like six or seven hundred dollars. See the price difference? But the thing I remember about the other one that we used to use at the body shop is that when you were coming down, it always went down nice and smooth. You're, you're relieving the pressure and it came, the car would lower nice and smooth. This one, when you go to lower it, it'll go smooth, smooth, and then stop. And then all of a sudden it would drop, right? It seems really sketchy. And then you take out more air and it doesn't want to move and all of a sudden it'll drop again like very abruptly and it just it's like I said it seems sketchy but there's actually some YouTube videos out there some guy who like tore this apart and looked at it and it basically has to do with like the machining of the parts and inside the tolerances and all that great so when it's trying to come down it's actually binding you know whereas the more expensive name brand stuff doesn't have that problem because it's uh, more of a quality product if you will but anyway, I didn't buy this. A friend of mine bought it for his garage because he kind of does the same thing I do. He works out of his out of his garage, works on cars. But if I thought I had no space here, he really has no space. His garage is about the same size, but he has so much stuff on the sides that when he pulls a car in, he literally just has space to walk down the side of a car. And he, he bought one of these and he said it's a game changer for him. And I could see that happening for him because he has no space. Now, my situation isn't exactly like his. I have space to, you know, pull down on the, the jack handle without hitting anything. So I could see how someone who has very, very limited space, this is a game changer. So he actually went out and bought one for me. 